Welcome to Northeast Site Contractors. This video is your first step to ensure your safety on the job. There were nearly 3 million non-fatal workplace injuries within private industry last year. That translates to about three workplace injuries per 100 full-time workers. Over the next few minutes, we'll discuss the most common workplace injuries and how you can lower your risk of becoming another statistic. Here at Northeast Site Contractors, we take your safety seriously. Every day, the goal is for you to go home as healthy as you came into work. But in order for that to happen, you need to be aware of what's going on around you, the risks involved, and common sense ways to avoid injuries. In 1971, the U.S. government formed OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Their job is to ensure employee safety. OSHA inspectors randomly inspect job sites to make sure they are compliant with the laws. They can also find any business found operating outside of the state and federal safety guidelines. This is important for you to know, because when you don't follow our safety guidelines, you risk not only injury, but also your job. So when safety standards aren't followed, everyone loses. At Northeast Site Contractors, you'll be taught what to do and what not to do by the most experienced members of your team. You'll be shown the correct procedures. However, if at any time, you feel that you're instructed to operate a piece of machinery or work in an environment that is not safe, tell your supervisor your concerns immediately. You have the right to refuse work in an area you think is unsafe. Northeast Site Contractors follows OSHA rules and regulations. The work we do involves large equipment, excavation and digging, and even electricity. Personal protective equipment is required of all employees at all times on all job sites. This includes a hard hat, safety vest, eye protection, and gloves. Hearing protection may also be required when using certain tools or operating certain pieces of equipment. We supply all of this to you. If any of your PPE wears out or is lost, we will replace it. You are also required to wear safety-toed work boots. The most common injuries workers suffer in heavy equipment accidents are from being struck by or crushed. In some cases, amputation or death can occur. Electrocution can happen when heavy equipment comes in contact with live electrical wires. This can cause severe damage to any part of the body and produce severe burns, which sometimes result in permanent pain and scarring or even death. Falling is another risk, whether a worker falls from a height or falls into a trench, or a piece of equipment falls onto someone. The effects of these injuries can be permanent or even deadly. Now that we've mentioned some of the risks at the work site, let's take a closer look at five important areas. Trenching, hand injuries, falls, electrocution, and heavy equipment. Trenches are a narrow excavation made below the surface of the ground. This is done to move dirt, install water lines, utility lines, and electrical conduit. According to OSHA, trench collapses or cave-ins pose the greatest risk to workers' lives. Before workers enter a trench, a soil analysis should be conducted to determine the appropriate employee protection methods, such as sloping, benching, shoring, or shielding. Here in our area, most of the soil is unstable, so a trench box is generally used. There are five things you should know to stay safe when working in and around a trench. First, ensure there's a safe way to enter and exit. Employers must provide ladders, stairways, ramps, or other safe means of egress. If conditions in a trench or excavation become hazardous, survival may depend on how quickly workers can climb out. Second, Trenches must have cave-in protection. All excavations are hazardous because soil can be unstable. OSHA requires that protective systems or equipment be used while working in trenches or excavations that are five feet or greater in depth. 
our company policy is that these protective systems, such as trench boxes, must be in place for any trench greater than four feet in depth. Without these systems, workers are in danger of being crushed by a cave-in. Third, materials need to be kept away from the edge of the trench. Excavated material, also known as spoils, are hazardous if they're set too close to the edge of a trench. The weight of the spoils can cause a cave-in, or spoils and equipment can roll back on top of workers, causing serious injuries or death. Set spoils and equipment at least two feet back from an adequately protected excavation. Use retaining devices, such as a trench box, that will extend a minimum of 18 inches above the top of the trench to prevent equipment and spoils from falling back into the excavation. Fourth, look for standing water or other hazards. If any of these conditions exist, workers could be exposed to the possibility of suffocating, inhaling toxic materials, being burned or engulfed by fire, or drowning. And fifth, never enter a trench unless it has been properly inspected. If you feel it is unsafe, communicate this to your supervisor immediately. You cannot be forced to work in an unsafe area. Some common construction workplace hand injuries include puncture wounds, lacerations, crushed hands and fingers, amputated fingers, chemical, thermal, or electric burns, and frostbite when working outside in cold weather. You can help reduce hand injuries by being careful and by wearing the proper PPE, in this case, gloves. Fall hazards are present at most work sites, and many workers are exposed to these hazards on a daily basis. A fall hazard is anything at your work site that could cause you to lose your balance or lose bodily support and result in a fall. Walking near open excavations is fall risk. Poor worksite maintenance can lead to clutter and debris on a construction site, creating additional slip, trip, and fall hazards. Personal fall arrest systems are one way to protect workers from falls. They're required when working in confined spaces like manholes. OSHA requires workers to wear a full body harness and personal retrieval system. Electrical hazards can result from overhead in underground power lines. Researchers have found construction workers are approximately four times more likely to be electrocuted than workers in all other industries combined. Electrocution results when a person is exposed to a lethal amount of electrical energy. Be safe by assuming all overhead wires are energized at lethal levels. Never touch a fallen overhead power line. Stay at least 10 feet away from overhead wires and keep all excavator buckets and arms at least 10 feet away from overhead power lines. If an overhead wire falls across your vehicle while you're driving, stay inside and continue to drive away. If the engine stalls, do not leave your vehicle. Call or ask someone to contact the electric utility company for help. Never operate electrical equipment when you're standing in water. Use ground fault circuit interrupters, especially when working in damp conditions. Always use caution when working near electricity. Accidents involving backhoes and large trucks account for half of all deaths in construction accidents involving heavy equipment. This includes collisions, rollovers, or running off the road. Rollovers are the most common type of heavy equipment accident. A rollover may occur when the equipment is operating on uneven ground, when a load is too heavy or is lifted too far from the vehicle's center of gravity, or when the machine collides with another piece of heavy equipment. The most common cause of death for workers other than the operator of the equipment are accidents in which a worker is hit by heavy equipment. Most often it happens when trucks are backing up. Another area of concern is being caught in between pieces of equipment. What's the difference between struck by and caught in between? Struck by injuries are produced by forcible contact or impact between the injured person and an object or piece of equipment. When the impact alone creates the injury, the event is considered as struck by. Struck by hazards are categorized as follows. Struck by flying object. Struck by falling object. 
struck by swinging object, struck by rolling object. When the injury is created by crushing injuries between objects, the event is classified as caught in between. Events that should be classified as caught in between include cave-ins, being pulled into or caught in machinery and equipment, and being compressed or crushed between rolling, sliding, or shifting objects. You can be pinned between equipment and a solid object, such as a wall or another piece of equipment, between materials being stacked or stored and a solid object, such as a wall or another piece of equipment, or between shoring and construction materials in a trench. These types of hazards can result in multiple broken bones, asphyxiation, or death. Never turn your back on a piece of equipment or truck. Be aware at all times of the equipment around you and stay a safe distance from it. Always be sure the operator of a piece of heavy equipment or truck sees you and acknowledges you if you have to walk near a piece of equipment or a truck. Never place yourself between moving materials and an immovable structure, vehicle, or stacked materials. Make sure all loads carried by equipment are stable and secured. Stay out of the swing radius of cranes and other equipment. Always wear a seatbelt to avoid being thrown from a vehicle and then potentially being crushed by the vehicle if it tips over. Research has shown that the three major factors that play into injury rates are sleep disorders, young age, and smoking. You need to arrive to work well rested and well exercised in order to lessen the chance of experiencing an injury. On the job site, personal protective equipment saves lives and prevents serious injuries. If you don't have PPE on, you could lose an eye or limb, sustain severe burns, or suffer a debilitating head injury. Personal protective equipment is required of all employees at all times on all job sites. It includes things like a hard hat, reflective safety vest, eye protection, and gloves. Northeast Site Contractors supplies all of this to every new hire and to anyone whose equipment wears out or is lost. You are also required to wear safety-toed work boots. Let's take a brief look at each of these items. A hard hat keeps your head safe if you hit it on something. If you wear a hard hat made from a non-conductive material, it can protect you from electric shock. A helmet also protects your hair, making it less likely to tangle in equipment or be exposed to caustic chemicals. It also reduces the amount of dust that gets into your hair. Without it, your hair can hold onto dust, putting it close to your face, where you can breathe it in and potentially irritate your lungs. Ensure that there are no dents or deformities on the hard hat shell and connections are tightened inside. And always replace a hard hat if it was used for any kind of impact, even if the damage is unnoticeable. During construction activities, you need to protect your eyes from dust and flying debris. If you wear prescription glasses or contacts, you must still wear safety goggles. Some types of protective eyewear will fit over your glasses, or you may get safety goggles with prescription lenses. On construction sites, reflective safety vests make sure that workers and visitors are highly visible when working on or walking through the job site. If personnel are not easily visible on job sites, they can be exposed to many types of injuries, especially when they're near heavy equipment, such as excavators, cranes, dozers, and trucks. Safety vests can help warn workers, equipment operators, and drivers that individuals are in the immediate work area. The extra visibility provides valuable time for them to stop or slow operations until people are out of the hazard zone. Always choose gloves that fit your hands properly. If your gloves are too large, the loose fit can make it difficult to use your hands. Gloves that are too small become uncomfortable quickly. Inspect gloves every time you wear them. Look for holes or breaks in the surface. Proper safety boots can protect your feet from serious injury. Use boots that have slip resistant soles that can protect against compression and impact. The shoes must meet the minimum standard set out by ANSI Z41-1999.
Remember, safety on the job at Northeast Site Contractors is important to us. Being safe doesn't slow things down. It ensures a properly running operation. Be aware of your surroundings. Let a supervisor know if something doesn't seem right and warn others if you feel they may be putting themselves at risk.